Hi everyone, today I'm going to talk about Bitcoin and technical analysis. You've probably seen the technical analysis charts before. It's folks who go pop open YouTube and, and most of the other YouTubers on here, they're going to go and draw lines on charts and say, hey, I see a signal here or I see a pattern here. I'm going to go into the basics of what TA is and my personal thoughts on it. And before we begin, I want to give a shout out to Ledin. Ledin is one of my sponsors. It's the best place where you can borrow against your Bitcoin. So if you need that loan, great place to go or lend it out and earn a yield. With that being said, let's go ahead and hop on in into the uh, doc, into the uh, course today. So um, I write this first on Thursdays in my newsletter called The Held Report. So if you want to get that first, check out the link on the screen or check out the link below in the description to go subscribe. Um, and then on, on usually on Sundays, I publish this. Sundays or Mondays, I publish this uh, in a YouTube video with my voiceover. Okay, so what is technical analysis? You've probably seen charts like this before. We've got all sorts of lines on <laughs> lines on the chart, and there's entry, exit points, support lines, resistant line, resistance lines. If we want to get into kind of like the definition of it, it's basically um, it's an analysis method for forecasting and the the direction of prices to the study of past market data, primarily price and volume. So they basically rely on patterns. Uh, so technical traders rely on patterns, trends, signals to identify when to buy and sell stocks. And so does it work? Well, the data is a little bit muddled. So if you go to the Wikipedia, it says that whether it works or not is, is controversial. Um, there's all sorts of different analysis that has been done on if it works or not. I would say it's largely inconclusive. Some analysis said it doesn't work. Some says it. Some say it. Do, same. <laughs> some of the analysis says that it does work, and so honestly, it's it's pretty muddled. I spent about two hours reading through this and didn't really see a, a clear signal. All puns intended. Um, intuitively, though, we know that it's impossible to predict the market, um, and research shows that it's very difficult to beat the market consistently. So, um, what they did here is they looked at uh, analysis of. Uh, different funds over a 20-year period and found that it's it's very unlikely uh, that if you actively trade that you will outperform uh, the index, the S&P. And so, you know, what does technical analysis really look like? So the most common form is using like patterns, resistance zones, or, or indicators to give signal to the trader whether they should buy or sell an asset. And so, by the way, definitely recommend that you check out this article here. It's Investopedia's guide to technical analysis and price patterns. So they did a really great write-up. I borrowed a lot of this from that section. Okay, so pennants. So these are two trend lines, so like right here and right here, that eventually converge. And then, um, you know, essentially the pen, you know the key characteristic of that is that the pennants move in two directions. That is, one will be at a downtrend and the other an uptrend. Um, and so the figure below kind of shows that and. Sometimes if you see like volume decreasing when this is happening, uh, there's a hypothesis that that might, you know, yield uh, this sort of breakout moment and, you know, it could break up or it could break down. Uh, flags. So flags are constructed using two parallel trend lines that can slope up, down, or horizontal. I think a lot of us remember the, uh, the time period about a year and a half ago when Bitcoin was bouncing around 10K. That definitely felt like it was in a range. So some people call this like a range. Some people call it a flag. Um, and so here's an example of like what a flag might look like. Um, and so again, a lot of this is just kind of like drawing lines on charts. I'm not sure exactly how effective this is. Um, and I'll go into a little bit of like what value I see, might see here. Um, but again, I'm kind of skeptical on, on, on this. And <laughs> especially because I've also looked at a couple different YouTubers, crypto YouTubers, where they were both looking at the same pattern and both described the same pattern, and one said it was gonna go up and one said it was gonna go down. So I don't know if there's a super precise science behind all this. Before we begin, I wanna give a shout out to Choice, one of my sponsors. As most of you know, when you hodl, you don't have to pay taxes, but what if I told you that you could hodl, and when you eventually sell your Bitcoin, you wouldn't have to pay any taxes then? Well, I didn't think that was possible until I found a Choice IRA. Choice is the best retirement account to set up for Bitcoiners that lets you buy and hold Bitcoin in stocks without paying a dime to the government. And how does that work? Choice is an IRA. They have IRAs and Roth IRAs, which means it's a special type of retirement account where you don't pay taxes if you hodl until a certain age, along with some other stipulations. And the best part, you can self-custody your Bitcoin with Choice, which means that 
You don't have to trust Choice or anyone else with your Bitcoin or your private keys. It's the perfect retirement solution for Bitcoiners. The best time to start stacking sats was 11 years ago. The second best time is today. Search stack sats in the app store or choiceapp.io slash held. Link is included in the description below. Go get, check it out right now. And then there's a super popular one that you probably heard about, like the head and shoulders pattern. So you got the left shoulder head, right shoulder. Um, and so, you know, it's, <laughs> again, these things are either drawing lines on charts and, and kind of using that to describe um, why a price might move a certain direction. And so I wanted to touch on this uh, before I get to the end here on, on kind of my personal opinion. Like what are prices in the market like? A lot of people watching this probably haven't heard of efficient market hypothesis, so I want to touch on this for a minute. So Saifedean has a great quote here where he says, in a free market economic system, prices are knowledge and the signals that communicate information. Prices aren't simply a tool to allow capitalists um, to profit. They are the information system of economic production, communicating knowledge across the world and coordinating, coordinating the complex process of production. So basically, like prices are this coordinating function between buyers and sellers. And whenever you buy and sell something, that action gives more information to the market on whether or not they need to produce a good or service. So for example, let's say the price of toilet paper during the 2020 uh, COVID you know, scare starts to go up. Well, that's a signal that the price starts to go up because there's less and less supply from the suppliers. Well, the suppliers see the increase of demand because, <laughs> and they, so they start ratcheting up the price because they're like, wow, well, a lot of people want this. But then they go back to their factories and start producing a ton more because they can make a lot more money because their profit margin is now increased. So that's a good example of that. Um, another one that we think about is the efficient market hypothesis. So basically all prices, it's, uh, the hypothesis is that all information about the performance of an asset is likely baked into the price. So the share of Apple, Basically, everyone's expectations of what Apple will do in the future is baked into the current price now, um, which is really cool because it's sort of a one-way hash function. Um, so it's really the compression of all market data in the world, like everything about Apple, all the supplier information, everyone's personal opinions of it are all compressed into that one piece of information, the price. And that's super cool, I think. I think it's a, a really beautiful manifestation of capitalism and efficient markets is that these prices are these coordinating functions and representation of giant amounts of data. So traders ultimately use TA to extrapolate how information or price interacts with humans, um, with human psychology via prices, volumes, indicators, and patterns. So what are my thoughts on this? You know, with the most rigorous of processes, uh, with the best analytical mind and with patience and the discipline of a monk, you might be able to use TA effectively, but that's like super tricky to do. And it might take you like a decade to get really good at that. I do think there is value in TA in a more descriptive human emotional sense. So like essentially price levels indicate certain sort of like mental psychology. Like I saw this when Bitcoin hit $1,000 and when it hit $10,000. Um, this reflects social validation. Uh, the market cap means more liquid. You know, that sort of market cap level typically means more trading volume and liquidity, awareness of it and popularity of it. So the price represents all of those factors. And when it breaks above or below some of those, that represents certain market psychology. And so you could say that charts are a visual representation of market psychology. So I think that's really interesting. I think like TA is more descriptive, not predictive. So very important caveat there. I don't think it's going to predict future price performance, but I do think it describes aggregate you know, belief of something and defining that as certain levels or resistance levels or support levels. Um, there's also a little bit measure of self-fulfilling prophecy. So if everyone's looking at a certain indicator or price level, then that is reflexive. So people then trade in anticipation of everyone else thinking that too. It's the <laughs> classic Keynesian beauty contest. Um, personally, I think hodling is your better way to go. If you hodl, it's a lot easier to do, and it's probably going to give you better returns than trying to actively trade. And remember, when you actively trade, you're incurring many, many fees too. So with that, Hope you enjoyed this very basic introduction to TA and my personal thoughts on the efficacy of it. Cheers. Bye.